Well, good morning and welcome to the start of a very special reading vlog. So I'm in a different location, so let me catch you up just a little bit. So I very abruptly ended the last reading vlog. Uh, I did finish A Fire Endless on Tuesday and did not check in after that, but I did really enjoy it. I think if you enjoy the first one over Enchanted by Rebecca Ross, I, I think you'll really enjoy the second one. I feel like the, the vibes, the writing style, the atmosphere, the character work, the pacing I think was very similar kind of similar plot beats. I mean, there is a new plot, but some similar plot beats. Anyway, I think if you enjoy the first one, I think you'll really enjoy the second one, and I really did. I really enjoyed both of these. I really like this duology. So I finished that on Tuesday. On Wednesday, after work, we headed out to this cabin. We're in a cabin in the woods, and we decided to work from this cabin uh, on Thursday and Friday. Today is Friday, and so we decided to start work super early in the morning on Thursday and today as well, and then take a break in the middle of the afternoon to go on a hike, take advantage of the weather and the beautiful scenery, and then come back and work just a little bit more to finish out the work day. So yeah, we have a weird work schedule, but um, this was kind of the way we could fit it in and have a nice little treat for my birthday without using PTO. I will actually be taking off Monday as well, but my boyfriend won't. Um, so I'll just be curled up on the couch reading a book on Monday. Um, so that'll be fun, but this was a way that we could not use PTO for for at least these days and just still have a little bit of an adventure. So let me show you around really quick. One sec. So this is the cabin. It's a little messy because we have been here for uh, a couple of days or, you know, I got here on Wednesday and was here yesterday. So it is a little messy, but there's the TV and living area, the kitchen over this way, a little dining space, also a work area. We also have this area to work from if we want to stand up and then the bedroom and then we also just have um turn the light on the bathroom in here as well so it's a really really cute place let me set you back down again so yeah it's been it's been a fun couple of days and hopefully once we go on our hiking adventure a little bit later this afternoon i'm just taking a super quick break but um, once we go on our hiking adventure hopefully i can capture some of that we did have really lovely hike yesterday the second half of it was straight up for an hour so that was that was a little challenging but we made it. Uh, I am reading, the book I picked up after A Fire Endless is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Rashani Chakshi, and this one was to fulfill the prompt to read a book with flowers on the cover. So not only does it have flowers on the cover and kind of in that artwork there, but also the word flower in the title. So I figured this would be a fun fit. I'm over 100 pages in. 125 pages in or so. Really, really enjoying this one. All of the reads this month so far have been about vibes and atmosphere, which I love for me. Uh, the writing is gorgeous. I, it's it's been so much fun. I'm also listening to the audiobook and Steve West is one of the narrators and I adore him. I'm really enjoying the other narrator as well. So you're following two perspectives. You're following the bridegroom and he married someone named Indigo. It was kind of quick, and the main thing that she wanted him to promise was that he wouldn't pry into her past. She gets a letter that her aunt is sick and needs to go back and, you know, go back to that house where her aunt is, and he starts unveiling some secrets, including some about a mysterious friend that she had growing up named Azure. Anyway, the writing has been gorgeous. It's definitely just, I want to say fairy tale esque vibes, a little bit darker, slightly gothic vibes here. It's been fun. It's been fun. So I will be continuing that as we are here at the cabin. I'm hoping to finish it. We'll see. We'll see what can happen. 
but yeah that was my current read and so yeah i'll check in hopefully when we go on a hiking adventure a little bit later So it is later in the evening and yeah, we finished work around 1.30 and then went to go for that hike and saw some waterfalls and some beautiful scenery. So, and it was a pretty stressful day at work. And so that hike was definitely much needed for my mental health and sanity today. So we love that. And yeah, we, Got back a little after five and then I, I checked in at work. I needed to do about one more hour of work. And so I just checked in, wrapped some things up and then we had some dinner. And yeah, now we're just starting to wind down for the evening. We are gonna watch the latest episode of Next Level Chef, which I'm very excited about. So I might pour myself a little bit of wine to just unwind while we watch that they the airbnb host did leave some popcorn in that little basket back there so maybe we'll pop some popcorn and drink a little bit of wine and watch that um so yeah no reading has happened today past when i last checked in so yeah you know it is what it is it's been a good day doesn't have to doesn't have to be because of reading but it has been a good day I will hopefully do some more reading before bed so after we watch that episode of next level chef I, I am hoping to get some more reading in because I am really enjoying the last tale of the flower bride uh, just I don't know I'm just kind of sucked into the the vibes and the atmosphere um, it's just it's kind of mysterious and um, definitely, yes, yeah, as, as I said, very gothic vibes and a bit fairy tale esque and just, I, I'm digging it. I'm digging it. So I would love to read more before bed, but then we get to sleep in a little bit. We've been getting up early so that we could start working super early to be able to get off at 1.30. So yeah we'll get to sleep in a bit and see where the day takes us tomorrow we still we have the cabin tomorrow all day and then leave sunday morning but we can still have some adventures on our way back home so we'll, we'll see where the weekend takes us but it's nice to be done for work for the week and just relax a little
it is the evening of Saturday, April 15th, and I need to document my shame. So it's been a great day. We had a delicious breakfast and had coffee out by the river, listening to the water. And then we went to a bookstore. <laughs> and it was one of the most amazing bookstores I've ever been in. It was an entire, just huge warehouse of cheap books. Um, so that was dangerous. I, I, of course, never intend to go in buying a million books um, or come out buying a million books, but um, that's what happened. It's fine. It's fine. We're fine. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what I got here. We have The Charm Offensive by Alice Cochran, a romance following two people involved in a TV show. I've read her other book and really enjoyed it, so I'm quite sure I'm gonna love this one. It's on my five star prediction video list or list that I talked about in that video. It's on that list. So, I mean, I had to get a copy. I also got a copy of Book Lovers, which I really, really enjoyed. A Emily Henry romance involving two people in the literary world. So I absolutely love that one. I know I'm gonna wanna reread it someday. I also got Ecomind, which is an environmental non-fiction, so curious to try this one out. I wanted to get a middle grade. They had an entire huge room of middle grade in YA, and I saw Amari and the Night Brothers and absolutely had to pick it up. And I've heard this one compared to so many middle grade series that I absolutely love and involves Amari who is trying to find or get more information on her brother and I think joins joins up with a group of people and that that he invites her to join is that she finds a briefcase in his closet containing a nomination for trying out for the Bureau of Supernatural Affairs. That's what it was. And so this Bureau of Supernatural Affairs is somehow tied to what happened to her brother and she wants to find out what happened to her brother. And I'm just stoked to try that one out. I also have Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen and this one is on my summer list. This is, I think, a mermaid siren fantasy. Siren fantasy, I think somewhere in that ballpark which just screams summer fantasy to me so I have it on my list to save for the summer and yeah that's really all I know and all I need to know also this cover is gorgeous so and Matt's making dinner in the background so don't mind don't mind that and then we also have The Last Legacy by Adrian Young. This is set in the world of fable the fable duology which I really really enjoy and I think, believe this is a standalone in that world, but kind of tied to that world. And so I really enjoyed the Fable duology, so I had to pick this one up. I also got All My Rage by Saba Tahir, which is Saba Tahir's uh, contemporary or literary debut. She has a fantasy quartet. And I got the fourth one of that, which I'll show you in just a second. But this is her non-fantasy release that she recently came out with. I believe it's a... It also has a historical timeline, if I'm not mistaken. It follows a family and some generational stuff, coming-of-age story. I don't know. It's Saba to hear. I've heard amazing things. Had to get that one. I also got Ace of Spades, which is on my fall my radar for fall and is it is it dark academia I believe we have two characters who are going to school and are the only two black characters or only two black students at the school are main two characters and or maybe close to it close to the only two black students at this school and there are some notes going around about people exposing secrets and so you know dark academia meets gossip girl is kind of what I've been told but I've heard amazing things about this one and I think it's gonna be a great time 
So, and then as I mentioned, I did get the fourth book in Saba Tahir's Ember in the Ashes series. I have the first three in physical copy. I absolutely adore this series. I know I'm going to be rereading it. And so I have a copy of the fourth one. And then I also got a copy of The Bodyguard by Catherine Center, which is a romance I read earlier this year. I actually put it in a romance reading vlog, which I will link down below in case you're curious and didn't see it. And I absolutely adored this one, so I got a copy. Um, yeah, that, that's the damage. That's the damage. And then <laughs> after that bookstore, we went to a winery, had a great time drinking some delicious wine. The scenery was beautiful, and we just hung out. We read for a bit. We laid out on a blanket on the grass and just chilled and had some wine. I listened to a bit more of my current audiobook, which is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride. And I think I haven't mentioned in the other clips where I've been talking about this one. So I did talk about the bridegroom's perspective, but actually Azure is the other perspective. And that is the friend that our, the, the bridegroom's wife, um, you know, I say our main character, she kind of is the main character, uh, Indigo, and so this is Indigo's childhood friend. So she actually is a perspective and it's set a little bit farther back in time when they were kids trying, you know, and we're seeing the mystery of what happened between them through her perspective. Uh, but it's kind of funny because Indigo feels like the main character even though she's literally not a perspective in this book. We're learning about her through the perspective of her childhood friend and her her husband and it, you know so it's just kind of interesting because both of their worlds are really revolved around indigo and she and her childhood friend azure spent a lot of time in the other world and this is just kind of a a very mysterious, very loose magic system, very whimsical, dreamlike kind of vibes in here. Um, but it's been fun. It's been it's just been fun. And then you know our bridegroom, who isn't named throughout the story, he's just referred to as the bridegroom, is just trying to once he's in Indigo's you know childhood home with her aunt, um, you know it's just learning a little bit more about what's going on and or at least trying to figure out a little bit more even though she has told him not to pry into her past but it's kind of hard not to when they're literally there at her childhood home with her aunt and so but yeah I don't think I talked much about the other perspective and the fact that <laughs> the main person involved here is not a perspective which has been interesting. Anyway, I'm I'm digging it. I don't have too much left. I just have this bit down here left. This is the section that I've read. So I don't have too much left. Um, so we'll see if I can finish that before we get back home tomorrow. I did bring Sinlin Ascends as a very ambitious expectation of what I might be able to get through this weekend, but with starting work early and then going on hikes and then coming back, working a little bit more, dinner, watching an episode of TV and then just crashing. There really hasn't been much reading. So um, we did enjoy the episode of Next Level Chef. That was what we watched last night. And we'll see what we want to watch after dinner. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll, uh, I'll check in in just a bit.
morning. It is Monday, April 17th, which means it's my birthday and I've taken the day off of work to just chill. We had a great weekend and great just trip to Shenandoah. Even though we had to work the first couple of days, it was a great weekend. So after we got back from the winery on Saturday, we watched Shazam. Matt had never seen Shazam. And it's it's fun. It's fun. So we watched Shazam and then just went to bed and then Sunday we needed to check out of the Airbnb. So we just had some breakfast, packed up and, and headed out. So after we checked out, we went on a lovely hike and I got some footage of that. It, it was it was, a, it was a nice hike, a gorgeous view at the top, and so that was a lot of fun. And then we went to another winery to just have some fun, read, relax, and then came back and just unpacked and got everything set to come back. And while we were at the winery, I did start the one of the novellas in Loathe to Love You, so my plan for today is to finish Loathe to Love You and hopefully read Anna Maria and the Fox. I'm just in the mood for romance. Also, how gorgeous is this cover? I love it. Anyway, I'm just in the mood for romance. And so yesterday when we were at that winery and last night as well, I read one of the novellas here in Loathe to Love You. I've started another one. There are three total. And then there's a bonus chapter. So my plan is to finish that second novella this morning and then read Anna Maria and the Fox and then hopefully finish that last novella tonight potentially and just see how things go. Uh, we also on the way back started reading Sunland Ascends. Matt was very interested when I was describing to him what Sunland Ascends is about and so he agreed to, to let me start listening to that one on the way back um, and we were both having a really great time with it so I'll talk more about that one later. Sunday morning while we were packing up and on our way to that hike, I did also actually finish The Last Tale of the Flower Bride. I don't have too much more to say about my thoughts on it. I really enjoyed it. I loved the writing, the atmosphere, the vibes. That's what I would recommend going into this book for is the vibes, the atmosphere, the writing. Uh, that's, I think, what excelled here. But yeah, I had so much fun with it. Um, so yeah, that is, that's the plan for today is I want to get some things done while listening to these. So I'll get some little bits done here and there, but mostly I just want to chill and read and just have a nice day. I'm also getting the 35 books that I want to read before I'm 35 that I intend to post today. I'm getting that finalized. I just finished editing. I had edited most of it, but I just needed to edit the pictures in. And I meant to do that while we were at the while we were at the cabin, which of course didn't happen. So I am last minute finishing that editing and hopefully we'll be able to get it up today to get it up when I hope to get it up. So hopefully that'll work. And then at some point I'll work on editing this vlog as well. I'll probably go a few more days with this vlog and just have I think the first one covered about the first 10 days anyway, so I think maybe I'll just do three about 10 day vlogs for April. I think that'll be fine. So anyway, we'll see, we'll see how today goes. Same place a bit later, but quick update. So I have finished two of the novellas that are in this collection. I finished Below Zero and Stuck With You. And They've been so much fun, honestly. I have adored both of Ali's books and I'm really looking forward to the next one as well. And both of the novellas kind of followed a similar structure. We're following a scientist, which is common between all of her books and novellas. And we're following people who met through random circumstances, had a really positive first meeting and really kind of quickly started to fall for each other. Something happened and then, you know, they had some sort of falling out and then they have, through circumstances, come together later and are kind of forced 
together for some reason. And so in both of those novellas, you're following a kind of present day timeline where they're forced back together, even though our main character doesn't necessarily want to see that guy again. And then a, a past timeline where you kind of start with them meeting and then work forward to kind of what happened and why why they had a falling out and then you know in the present day timeline kind of work through whatever happened so that's kind of the structure of both of the novellas in one of them you're following a nasa scientist who um, had done an informational interview with someone that one of our close friends um, is a family member of who worked on one of the rover missions to Mars and she initially meets this guy, they hit it off, and then you know, sometime later she now works for NASA and is undergoing some experiments in the Arctic Circle and they come into contact again up there um, and so I don't want to say too much about these novellas I think if you just understand kind of the structure and some of the tropes and you're familiar with Allie Hazelwood's kind of writing and style I think that's really I think it's really all you need to know personally and then the other novella follows a an engineer who works for a very small green engineering company and um, comes across or meets these circumstances someone who actually works at a uh, competing engineering firm and um, so you see them meeting you see them heading it off in a cafe you see them coming together later because they're stuck in an elevator they work in the same building they're stuck in an elevator together and as the power has gone out and there's some power outage in their area of New York City. And so that's how they're stuck together and they work through things. That's really all I want to say. Both of them have been super cute, super fun, and I just had a great time with both of them. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading the, the last novella that's in there. And I imagine it'll probably follow a similar structure, but We'll see. I have also started Anna Maria and the Fox, and I am just instantly adoring this. I'm sucked in. I'm, I'm there. And you're following Anna Maria, and you're following Mr. Fox, who is a member of Parliament and is working, to, working with other members of Parliament to try to abolish um, the transatlantic slave trade. And you know, very passionate about that because his mother was taken from Africa and enslaved and and so that's part of his background and part of, you know, his family history and so he's really wanting to stop <laughs> this horrific stuff going on and Anna Maria and her two sisters and I believe this is going to be a series and that we're also going to follow her two sisters in two upcoming books, Anna Maria is the oldest, and they are the daughters of some noble, well-off-ish. Um, is noble the right term? Anyway, they're the daughters of some wealthy people in Mexico, and in Mexico City, and they have kind of fled during the French occupation and are you know have come across to england to stay with an uncle they're actually or to you know be looked after by their uncle they're actually staying with someone else who is supposed to kind of help introduce them to society and uh, you know and they're learning a lot about british culture they're learning a lot about the expectations that are placed on women um, that you know, ha have some commonalities with where they're from, but they're also kind of learning about, you know, British society and British um, nobility and kind of that scene and who they can trust and who they can't and as they are learning. And yeah, so she meets Mr. Fox at, a, at one of 
uh, at one of the balls, one of the, anyway, they, they meet at one of these and, you know, at first they, when they first see each other, they don't actually have a conversation. He just kind of acknowledges and agrees with something that she says non-verbally and they actually talk later through circumstance where they run into each other again um, and then they dance and uh, she's starting to learn about uh, the double standards placed on women and how she's falling into some traps that she didn't realize she was falling into and some gossip is starting and anyway that's really what's happened so far I'm loving the writing, I'm loving the sisters, I love their dynamics so far. Um, yeah, it's it's been great, it's been great. So, I'm having a grand time. I also have posted the video uh, talking about 35 books and series that I would love to, love to read over the next couple of years before I turn 35. So, yeah, I did get that posted, which I'm pleased with. <laughs> And I didn't get any more editing done, but I have just been getting a bit of cleaning and just other random stuff done as I've been listening to the audiobook uh, for these two. So, yeah, having a good time. It's about three right now. I'll probably continue listening, get a little bit more done, but otherwise just chill on the couch for a bit, listen until we have dinner. We're going to go uh, to dinner a little bit later, so, yeah. It's been a good day so far. <laughs> so it is now Thursday the 20th. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this vlog, even though I haven't finished editing the first vlog for this month. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get both of these up soon and I'll have some time for editing this weekend. Hopefully it has been a crazy week at work, but I wanted to wrap up what I was reading on my birthday because that was when I last checked in and then it's yeah like I said just been an exhausting week but I did finish Anna Maria and the Fox and this one was delightful I enjoyed this one so much it was pretty slow and one of the main conflicts that's actually cited in the synopsis on the inside flap actually happens a good chunk of the way through the book but it's really just about the relationship between these sisters. It's about them trying to make their way in a completely new environment and figure things out, figure out who they can trust and just get to know society, get to know their position. Again, try to just figure out what they need to do to survive. And that's honestly most of it. <laughs> But I, yeah, I just, I adored their dynamic. I was just, there was something about the writing, the atmosphere that just completely sucked me in. And yeah, I love the sisters. I'm so excited for each of the other sisters to get their own book. So if you're in the mood for a historical romance that is just slow, but immersive and just fun, would highly recommend. So I did also finish the last novella in this collection and it actually followed a different structure from the other two and followed an EPA scientist who her she's moving to DC to start her job at EPA her mentor her PhD mentor has left her her part of or her ownership of part of a house in DC as part of her inheritance or as part of her will she has, you know, given this scientist her part of this house in D.C. And part of the catch is that there's someone else who lives there who owns the other half of the house. And that's the mentor's, is it nephew? And so our main character just still decides to move in and just say, hey, I own half of this house according to your aunt's will. Like, I have a right to be here too, <laughs> and you know, they don't really get along at first, and then start to get along, all that good stuff. Um, so it's structured a bit differently, forced proximity kind of situation, but it was super fun. I just, it was delightful. It was delightful. It was, 
I had a great time. It was a great, great day of reading for my birthday. I then picked back up Senlin Ascends. I think I quickly mentioned this in my last check-in that Matt and I had started listening to this as we were driving back from our adventures um, over the past weekend. And we're both really enjoying it. I've continued on and you know, I'll let him know my thoughts on the rest of the book and then I advise him to read it probably because I'm still really enjoying this. This has just been super fun. The writing is a bit formal but still really easy to get into and in case I hadn't mentioned it before, this one follows our main character Senlin who is about to go on a honeymoon, his honeymoon with his wife, and very quickly loses her. They're going to this Tower of Babel and he very quickly loses her and needs to ascend the tower to try to see if he can find his missing wife. And every floor in this tower has a very unique thing, vibe going on. And there are a bunch of rules that are, come with each floor. There are a bunch of obstacles to overcome to get through that floor and get to the next one. It's, it's just been entertaining so far. So I'm going to cut it off here and then start my next one since it's the 20th. I'll just make it three 10 day vlogs and cut it off here. Start with Sen Lena Sens in my next vlog. And yeah, as I said, hopefully this weekend be able to get some editing done and just post both of these relatively soon. Uh, definitely the first one I'm hoping to get up next week. Maybe I can even get up both of these next week. We'll see. We'll see. But it has been a delightful reading month. So love that for me. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. And be sure to subscribe for more bookish content. And I will link everything down below, including my Instagram, more information about how you can support the Black Lives Matter movement. And yeah, I will see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.